This here? Uh, like, for example, this here was shot out. This last year, y'all just shot out. You know what I'm saying? They all go there, oh, they fall, Late on a dimly lit night at the Highland Park Apartments in Highland Hills, local activists patrolling this high crime area of South Dallas were taking fire. Moments before, a young resident, angered over some stolen weed and a dispute with his girlfriend, began shooting in the air. Marcus X. Russell, one of the activists, walked toward the shooter. As Russell made his approach, he told the shooter to leave immediately. Russell said that he wasn't going to call the police, but that he had to leave. All the shooter must have heard was something about calling the police because as Russell closed the distance, the resident changed his position and began shooting in the activist's direction. The patrollers took cover behind some cars and directed other residents who were playing with their children outside back into their apartments. The gunfire didn't stop until the shooter was out of bullets. The activists on the patrol, a coalition comprised of the group's guerrilla mainframe and black empowerment movement, were armed to the teeth. They almost always carry shotguns, machetes, and semi-automatic rifles as they make their rounds. They had been patrolling the complex for months, but not once, even as they took fire that night, did they shoot their weapons. Later, they were able to safely approach the young, 16-year-old shooter and talk out their dispute. If it were the police doing the patrol, Devante Peters, one of the activists, says he worries that the resident would have died that night. Twenty nineteen was one of Dallas's most violent years since two thousand seven, with more than two hundred homicides. Mayor Eric Johnson and Dallas Police Chief Yu Renee Hall have both rolled out plans and recommendations to make the city safer. While time would only tell if their methods were effective, Guerrilla Mainframe and Black Empowerment took matters into their own hands. This is the story of those patrollers. You're watching a Cobb cast. I'm Cobb, and this is the cast. Every night around 9 p.m., the groups would grab their weapons and begin their rounds of the complex. They have a list of regularly vandalized vacant apartments, or vacos as they call them, that they check on throughout the night. Patrol coming through! Yeah, I guess I'm doing it. That was that here. We protect the black people. We ain't doing nothing bad, y'all. Patrol coming through! Tighten up! Tighten up! Patrol coming through! Peace, Kenny. Come in here, hurt! Announce yourself, announce yourself, and come in here! Come in here, hurt!
the issues is uh, people breaking into the home, to the, to the uh, apartments. And so uh, what they do is vandalize them and trash them. Also uh, set fires uh, to different apartments, as you will see, um, if those apartments aren't secure yet. Uh, also, uh, so pretty much, you know, they're causing damage. And we wouldn't even know that they're occupying these spaces had they not, um, you know, took the doors off, uh, put holes in the walls and things of that nature. But you also see feces on the ground as well, you know what I'm saying? So this is uh, some of the activities, uh, just like that right there. These are some of the activities we're trying to deter uh, in this uh, neighborhood. And um, another reason why homelessness is a, pre a prevalent issue is that, you know, after a lot of the crimes are uh, committed, they'll run into these uh, uh, apartments and they'll, uh, you know, um, hide their uh, stolen properties or, uh, you know, just hide out from, um, you know, just to uh, hide out and deter from, you know, the laws or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and we spoke with, we spoke with, uh, to Tanel Atkins, we went to the uh, town hall budget meeting. We told him he needs to uh, put some more money into the homeless issue out here. You know. Yeah, we good. We good. We good. Some new shorts. New shorts. Yeah, new shorts. Oh, that window's broke too. Window's broke. You know it ain't all the way. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Window's correct. You might have stayed late tonight. I can get some more. Catch somebody trying to break it. Just breaking. What's the number? Yeah, this one. Uh, that was compromised. Okay. That was compromised. What the fuck is that? Is that a bag of shit, cuz? Is that a bag of shit? I think that's a bag of shit. No, look. Tissue? Tissue with shit on it? Probably uh, so. That's what it is. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we, we, we got a community cleanup, baby. Mark that on the list, one of them. Yes, I got it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cover. Okay. Yeah. 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 Breach it, breach it, breach it, breach it. Announce yourself! Announce yourself! Secure! 208 secure! 208 secure! 100%. We just left the DISD school board meeting, you know, and I spoke, and that's what we do. We go to the town hall meetings, we go to the city council meetings, we throw events. If we got to take them to work, we'll take them to work. We clean up the whole apartments, you know, so we engage in the community, not policing them. Tell them about the Tanel Atkins at the Budget Town Hall. At the Budget Town Hall? Oh, yeah, we went there to tell him about this store right here that has this homeless problem. Uh, where a lot of the people stay in these vacants and destroying apartments are staying on this property and they come here at two in the morning. What's the store? This store right here, Highmark. The store we shut down last week for taxing people on non-taxable items. We just shut them down mm -hmm. for doing that. They also have a bad uh, homelessness problem right here. And we told the city councilman to act his office is right here. And uh, when, we, when we got online, we seen that the city was trying to make a law to where they, they uh, where they uh, take people to get jail and give them tickets if they're on people's property, like gas stations, without permission. So instead of them, like we asked them to send money to build facilities for homeless people, they decided they were going to ticket them and fine them. And so it seems like the city, instead of solving problems we give them, they want to make money off of them. 
you know, and that's kind of the problem we have. And so, like, you see these people, they coming from these stores late at night, and, we, and that's what a lot of what we've been shutting down. That's what a, a lot of the criminal activity and things going on is coming from the homelessness in this area, which is not just older people. It's 18-year-old homeless people, 60-year-old homeless people, and they're all on drugs, and it's causing a, a real great problem in the city of Dallas all over. Because it's not just going on in Highland Hills. You can go over there by Redbird Mall. It's happening. You can go off Forest Lane to Dillion. It's happening. You can go to Pleasant Grove to the apartments. It's happening all over the city. Well, come on. Somebody might say that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just go this way. We don't want to. We don't want to ever tiger nobody. Huh. Oh yeah, we can go on this. Uh, we in wouldn't out. do that. Even if we ran the wrong apartment, we'd be smart enough not to kill nobody. Coming in. in apartment. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. We coming in hot. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Kitchen is clear. Living room clear. Bathroom. Clear. 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 They stealing the wire. Stealing the copper. So they stealing the wire? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, stealing the copper. Anytime you see this down, that's what they're doing. They're they doing. getting them bricks from outside and getting this down. Damn. We got to get that door locked. Uh, uh, let me get some light in here. That's oh Yeah, they stripping that copper. Stripping the copper. And sell them it. Yep. Somebody done had some dope. Bigger bags. Yeah, they got the bags. They got bags. They got some meat. Meat, food. Belt. They shooting dope. They shooting. Somebody got a belt. Yeah, they shooting dope. And you know. I need to stay late because I got to smash somebody. So we're not looking to wage war on homeless people, but you know, we, when we see uh, the type of people um, that we're dealing with, you know, uh, they're doing drugs, they're doing all types of shit, and it's pretty much uh, putting this, uh, put, putting this uh, mm. complex in a situation to be, uh, you know, uh, burnt down. We had some homeless people talking about, um, you know, burning down the apartments, and when we go inside some of these vacos, we'll see the burn holes, uh, you know, on the floor. Uh, things of that nature. So, like I said, we're not trying to wage war on homeless people, but at the same time, we would like to uh, have this uh, community um, that basically change the atmosphere, man, make it a more um, motivating and inspiring uh, community to be a part of. And this is not motivating or inspiring, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's what we got to, you know, address this element, the element of homelessness. And a lot of it is teen, teen homelessness, uh, kids that are homeless, uh, they feel like you know, they don't have any anywhere else to go, anything else to do, so they decide to break and vandalize these uh, apartments. And we we shut down crime in these apartments without one shot being fired by us. Right. Not one. We ain't shot nobody, and we ain't even shot the gun one time. Towards the front. Yeah, towards that white truck. We've even been in the shootout, and we didn't shoot back, and we didn't kill the individual, and we later on we talked to the individual. Calm them down and see what was going on. We're not advising other people to do that. Right. But it seems like we're doing stuff that the police can't do. You know? Because if that would have been a shootout, they would have killed them. The individuals came through and did a drive by in the apartments last week. And yeah. they shot at everybody. Uh, we closed the gate. That was something that uh, really didn't have nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we stopped people from in the, that's in these apartments from doing things. But a lot of times it's, it's hard to stop people coming from outside mm -hmm. doing whatever they want to do. But right. we closed that back gate and it won't happen as long as that back gate is open. Right. But like, well, the, reason, the reason I'm telling you that is because, it, you know, we've shut down crime, but it ain't over. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, now we got the whole city on right. the scenes with homelessness. Right, so, like, you know, I guess uh, what's different from what we're doing and what the uh, police do is they kind, they kind of seem uh, like they're coming as aggressors, they come in as agitators. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get an understanding opposed to, uh, you know, trying to escalate a situation. Uh, we we seen multiple people in a uh, vacant apartment. We didn't, you know, shoot them. We didn't beat them up or anything like that. We just tried to, you know, uh, get a better understanding of their situation, you feel me? And then also see how we could step in. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, try to get a better understanding of their situation, connect them to resources. Mm -hmm. um, but had that been a police officer, they would have probably been hit with a trespassing or breaking and entering or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, 
you know, we, we don't want to be an extra hindrance or extra hurdle to our people. And like we moved in, you know what I'm saying? So we, these are our neighbors, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to be a hindrance uh, or an obstacle to our neighbors. We want to uplift them. But, but at the same time, you know, we got to be uh, realistic about the elements that we're dealing with, you know. Coming in hot. Secure. Secure. 159 secure. We're going upstairs. Yeah. Coming in hot. I got the point. I got the point. Is anybody in the park? Coming in hot. Coming in hot. We're all. Is anybody in the park? We're all. Keeping note of all the ones. That, Correct. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Just so you can come back around and double check. Yes, sir. Double, triple, quadruple yeah, check. Yeah, we're, right. we're also uh, in a group. We're taking management and the owners at the same time. So. Got it. So and are they are they appreciative of the stuff that you guys? Yes, do? Oh sir. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, right. sir. I mean, that's our payment. The appreciation is our payment, that's sir. Our payment, the appreciation. And yes, sir. Really, no one can help them. And so us doing this is like they're able to do other things now. Now, now they have, they have the time to buy new windows, put doors in. Uh, clean apartments up and put new residents in. They couldn't do that at first because all the vacant apartments were being burned down and tore up and used for criminal activities. So this right. is a, this is a big determinant of criminal activities by us going in these vacant apartments. And a lot of those vacant apartments that we went to and we was trying to see if they're secure. Uh, initially, those were not secure. Were secure. But through our uh, through us doing what we we're doing, they've been uh, better able to you know lock them up and, and get them secured. And Right. What about that flooded department? Let's go check it. Let's check it. Troll coming through. Coming up, we're on. Coming in hot. Coming in hot if it's open. Secure. 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 264 secure. Okay. Troll coming through. 264 secure. Hello. Yeah, how you feeling? We making sure ain't nobody, you know, running up in the party. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the, uh, so the issue with this uh, apartment, um, what it is, it's an elderly uh, uh, woman who lives under this apartment. Uh, one night, you know, we had to, we seen some cats in the vacos. We had to make them, the vacant apartments, we had to make them leave. And uh, out of, re in retaliation, they came two hours later, uh, flooded this uh, entire apartment out. And then, you know, subsequently, uh, the water came into the elderly person's uh, apartment. And, you know, she doesn't have any kids or nobody to check on her. So uh, nobody really knew until the uh, next day. So this is some of the activity that we're trying to stop, you know what I mean? Uh, shit that, that really, really ain't got no place. There's no reason to, um, you know, flood departments. Yeah, so we're not gonna say homelessness is, is the root of the issue. But uh, in this community, man, like like I was saying, there's nothing motivating or inspiring uh, for or or uh, productive for people to uh, get into when they leave that their uh, house, when they leave that community. That they walk outside, go to Bonnie View, Simpson, Stewart. There's literally no place that they can apply for a job. You understand me? So uh, things like that actually, and there's no um, vocation centers. There's nowhere for people to get skills and things of that nature. So that contributes to the climate. You know what I'm saying? And that contributes to this uh, neighborhood uh, being uh, less motivating uh, to to live live in you know we just cleaned up the whole apartment complex uh saturday and um the purpose of that was you know once they see us out here patrolling but also uh, the community gets to see us in a different light where we actually clean up and we pick up trash off the uh, floor which is not ours but the, the whole point of that is to uh boost the morale of the people in this community you know what i'm saying because uh 
you know, it's, it's really not a motivating uh, community to be a part of, but it can, and through this process, uh, that's what we plan to do. Okay, okay. Well, like you said, these are for women that are uh, off drug abuse and want to get their families back. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had a 10-foot gate around this. We call these the red. We actually stand here, but there's nothing but women and children stay here, all races. White, white women stay here with their kids, black women stay here with their kids, Hispanic women stay here with their kids. So every race is in here, uh, and it's nothing but women and children. And so they are the ones that really wanted us to come in at first. Mm -hmm. So we came in here for him, them, to protect them, and then, but to do that, we had to shut these down. We're not just patrolling apartments, we actually moved in them, which a lot of people don't do. They patrol, but they don't move in and live in the apartment. And that what made the big change to us staying here, so. Let's go. Oh, and um, it's uh, a note. Tanel Atkins' office is right outside these. Uh, if you jump the gate right here, you'll be at his office. Right. Uh-huh. Troll coming through. No, they had to, when I told you about the drive-by, it took right. the police like six hours to come. Mm -hmm. Six hours. The police station is right here. It's a brand new police station down the street. Less than two miles. Less than two miles. Guys come through and do a drive-by. The manager calls the police. The police never show up. Well, five hours later, and they wonder why they got community engagement specialists over here. Gorilla Mainframe, BEM over here, putting in that work. Community engagement activists putting in that work. Because, you know, I, I'm not dissing them. But all I'm saying is the facts is facts. Management called. There was a drive-by over here last week. It took police five, six hours to get here. You know, some. It, it, you know, that's really ridiculous. Hey, so look, it's uh, two problematic apartments that uh, they brought to our attention. Y'all want to check these two? Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's what we're dealing with right here. And, it's, and every time they do something, it's costing the owners money, management, and. Uh, and it seems like the city, you know, they want to take the apartments, man. So they're not really concerned. Nope. Just take what they want so they can take it. So yeah. we can get the fines and stuff like that. Look, that opens the door. Yeah. But like I, I said, it's people coming from this store right here. That opens the door. They live at this door. store during the daytime. Mm -hmm. They come over here at 2, 3 in the morning and go in these vacos and turn them up and try to burn them down. And we don't want, a lot of our residents got kids, and we don't want these homeless people snatching a little girl coming out and bringing into a vacant apartment and raping them. You know, we're dealing with all that type of stuff, too. Every single day our lives is on the line. Every single day. One of them, they named Glendale. Glendale. Glendale, he uh, threw a rock and, yeah, he threw a rock and uh, a window with two little girls in there. Uh, their mom, they leave, she leaves for work at 7 o'clock in the morning. We actually uh, seen him over there. Uh, and, you know, they, they let us know that he knows that they stay there. He knows what time they mom, their mom leaves for work. Tighten up, tighten up. And so, you know, that's uh, that's uh, just expounding on one of the issues he was talking right about. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is a coalition effort. Uh, Black Empowerment, GMF. Uh, the coalition is uh, community engagement specialists, activists. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Empowerment is based out of Fort Worth. So this basically is a Dallas and Fort Worth coalition and uh, we basically work together. And also, we do this in Fort Worth and they come to Fort Worth to do the same thing and Fort Worth come to Dallas. So it's a whole Stop team, seats, a whole coalition, coalition effort All right here. We love this, man. We love our people, so we got to, we can't wait on everybody else to police us. We have to police ourselves. Well, we ain't police. We, ain't, we, engage. we do we not engage. police nobody. We ain't police and we engage. Engage. We protect ourselves. Anything can happen. Um, I think, I'm sure I'm stressing what Devontae has already stated. The most important part of what we're doing here now is more or less the engagement, the engagement process. Talk to people.
And that's, and that's, you know, to a degree, that's fine. You know, as far as homelessness, I'm not talking about just someone who's just being homeless. I'm talking about someone who, you know, may not be in the best interest of the overall community. Right? Yeah. trying to extract him before the uh, police come. He's in here saying, man, uh, man, y'all gonna kill me, y'all gonna kill me. And we just reassuring him that that's not what we're here for, uh, but we can't speak for what the police is gonna do when they get here. So uh, we're trying to just uh, remove him uh, before the police come, because we can't speak for uh, what they'll do, you did. Yeah. Are they on their way? Uh, well, they they called him. Uh, I think she was on the phone with him. That don't mean that they gonna come, actually, but uh, the, the call was made. Yeah. So, so how how far do you go to try to get someone out of out of the house that the owners don't want them in? Um, I mean, it seems like you guys are being pretty calm about the whole thing. Sorry. Come on, bro. Come on. Get, get a shoe. Get some shoes on. Get some shoes on. Get grab a shoe. Grab a shoe. You do it, bro. I think our approach, um, the way we handle things. We don't have to go to extremes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is a person that's uh, on drugs that the cops would say, uh, or potentially would say is a threat. Uh, and making him high security. But you see, uh, he's walking, he's leaving. Uh, that's him. So, uh, just our approach makes us, uh, we're able to de-escalate uh, high energy, uh, volatile situations uh, in this matter without shooting anybody, without harming anybody. But uh, we have to be on the side of the people's back. So if, if we had to use more force, um, get, given the nature of the situation, um, we would have potentially did that. But uh, we haven't had to do that yet. Yeah, he's very walk around right. Well, he's already at the Family Dollar. His own mama broke his own mama head. Why we? Why we awoke? Can you kind of explain to me what the situation was? 
He on drugs. He want me to let him in the house. I call the police on him all the time. I asked him to stay away from me because I got grandkids in there. He here bamming on my door. I'm just trying to ignore it. I can ignore stuff like that. But when you climbing through my window, kicking, kicking me while I'm trying to pull you out, something wrong with you. He on drugs. He probably on wet and powder. Yes. Yes. And this this what happened to me with my own family. Don't nobody over here mess with me. It's my family. But yeah, man, it's real out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's a random situation. Even the guy that uh that you know we had the situation with shot at us um uh, two weeks back or a couple months ago, whatever, uh you know, he was uh, involved in a situation. Um, to where, uh, you know, he shot someone, someone was trying to fire on him, and, uh, you know, he's back out here today. And it was co a coincidence that we heard six shots last night uh, during the storm. That was probably his hand. You know, so, uh, that does not be bad. They shot each other. I guess. It was. If a. Oh. I, I, I was inbound, you know? It could have been by any number of things, but I'm sure it was petty. I mean, they, they know each other well. Uh, must have been, I would imagine, I mean, if I was going to shoot somebody. Yeah, that, that, that reason was probably not the same reason that you would have. <laughs> um, it's, it's probably, it's probably half as long lines with something having to do with respect. You know, it, you know, something would be petty, but then the underlying reasoning is respect. That's probably, and I'm just uh, theorizing truly, but I think it probably had just something to do with respect. But fortunately, both of them survived. And that's the important thing. Uh, This here, uh, like for example, this here was shot out. This last here was shot out. You know what I'm saying?
much of a problem with this. Warning stuff or something. But see, what, what sets us different from all like the all the sensational top is things like this nobody really gets to see. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've seen. Scenes. Yeah, this boy, you know what I'm saying? We we've done our best to get trapped. A lot of things, a lot of different things you just saw tonight. You know what I mean? A lot of different things, different elements. You talk to different elements in the community. That's part of the work that a lot of people don't want to do. We in the mud. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We don't I don't have to be here. You know what I'm saying? I choose to be here. You know what I mean? Because this is thought part of my process and my thought process. You know, that's what I believe in. He felt he felt a certain level of disrespect with low key follow behind him, and that was the that was what that discussion was about. Basically. I didn't want reason why I didn't want you guys to come over there with the cameras because I didn't want I didn't want to get all crazy and wild and all this other kind of stuff and make it uncomfortable for us still being here and and for them too, but mainly for us still being here because they don't they don't necessarily know what perspective y'all what, what perspective y'all are they, you know so that's just the main thing. What was what was the initial the the one uh, gunshot thing? I think that was D Man. That was, that was him. That, that, was, that him. was him. That it's just him, just being him. Because he he has a, a mental health issue. Yeah. Yes, that's the problem. It he has him. a drug it's issue. Just, it's just him being him. And, and um, is yeah. that just like um, is it, I mean, is that just him being with a bunch of his friends and trying to be cool and trying to show off? I think off? he's trying to get some uh, attention. Attention. Attention grab. Yeah. That's all yeah. it is. I mean, it's not for. I mean, it's, it's a, a cry for help. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Actually, it is. It's what it is, shit, but they ain't never had nobody even even check them. My thing check is check them or even if you have exactly. if you if you have nuts to pull a gun. Hold on, Pete. Hold on, Pete. Come on, come on. Hey, you can shoot. Come on, Uh, okay. The loud's right here. I don't know what this is. Are we good to go over here? Yeah. See, that's the problem over there. I told y'all. Yeah. Oh, they must have just got her phone. She's trying to break the window. Y'all, yeah, this is definitely show. Can you see me away? Huh. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hold on. I ain't put my lip gloss on. <laughs> He all right. He on drugs. He on drugs. He on that path on that way. He on drugs. Oh, I just had my phone to just leave. And we try, try to stop it. I know y'all is. Yeah. Try to hit you with a brick too, did he? Dang. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Try to hit his mama with a brick. That's what I'm saying. Hell yeah, with a brick. Hit me 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 with a brick. You go around. Man. You gonna walk through the park over there with me? Man. Come on, 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 come
I love this young brother right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And he's doing the documentary just to Dallas yeah. observe him. You know what I'm saying? This is really a legendary young brother from Highland Hills. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this one of the brothers we want to make it and be a great black man in the community. You know what I'm saying? He still has the opportunity and chance to be anything he want to be. You know what I'm saying? I think we saw you over there earlier. I mean, I can tell you, you know, I don't know if you want to tell, you know what I'm saying, our situation, you know what I'm saying, how we in the apartments came through, you know what I'm saying? Just tell them what you, you feel about us and yeah, how man, we came they, through. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nah, don't laugh, don't laugh. Don't laugh, don't laugh. Don't laugh, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Yeah. Now you saying as far as like y'all presence? Whatever you want to say, because I don't want to put your business man, out there. I'm just, I'm just say, that shit, they prisons made a difference and shit, man. <laughs> nah, real talk though, like when I say they prisons made a difference, it made a difference, you know what I'm saying? Uh, How did it make a difference? It made a difference though. Come, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, we come from him. I'm gonna feel that. Hey, man. Hey, you made my three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got shot in the back. He got shot in the back. And that's the one we had to shoot out with right? when we first got here. And, I was and we never back. shot back at him. He know we real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coming but from him, doing, that's big. Y'all doing good, you know what man. Saying? He ain't gonna say nothing about that. Nobody, you doing you know good, man. Don't come with no fake spot. I always tell y'all, I always watch. I always watch. So you know, the interest is generally like to work with the police. I can't even go today with the hot dogs. It is so happening. I got me four. Yeah, that was me. Okay, yeah. I was working out with hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some nice early days. The actual apartment. So, man, every time. Fuck street. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to put a food back in. Thrown down, he ran back over here. I guess he was angry. Yeah, man. And went back to his yeah. mother's house. Yeah. Got work. Got yeah, I'm trying to get a bill. So my mom got was, was sick. Here, here, the mother was all mean, so I ran. So, yeah. Had him under custody. Yeah. Yeah. We gonna, hey, man, we gonna, we gonna provide so, jobs too. We get it. Tom, I just got to work. I was actually lost. We tried to. Yeah, I got you. We tried to contain everything through ourselves. And so, just just so if you can help me kind of reconstruct what happened, because we were pretty far away from yeah. what happened. I mean, how did how did word get from here all the way back to, to y'all's place? Because he knew where to uh, get help. Long story short, by the time he got help, I was behind running towards the front. 
the branch in front had eyes on that the suspect, and I knew what was going on. I put him in chokehold, and I, he would have did a move and both was in the ground. I lost him. So was you was you on him when the police came? Oh yeah. I'm so glad they didn't shoot off. Yeah. I don't care. He sounds. Good. I don't care. For one thing, that uh, with me, I don't need a gun. I need a heart. My heart, for, my heart is for my heart is for my kids. You're right, and you might have just saved his life. Yes, right. his life. Because when the police were against him, I blame him. 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 I he would have been exactly. dead. The mother would be crying harder than she's in it right now. Right. She'd be heartbroken. Son gone. I lost a son. I'm in pain every day. Every day. So my job is to protect the village. That's it. Did you get it? He's going to jail probably for uh, public intoxication. He's going to be tired. He got a knife. He got a knife. They would have been a Last week, the same thing happened at my mama's house. My sister was beating on the door. She tried to jump through the window. My mama called the police. It's, they, got, they took her to jail for a public intoxication. They let out. Right. Oh, so, that's a family. Yeah. Why that's would you rather family. him go to jail for now, if he was a for breaking and entering? It's Is it because different. he'll be in jail longer if he goes in for breaking and entering? Yes. But they say he's going to jail for public intoxication and he got warrants. That's his mama. But they won't tell me what kind of warrants he got. No, he got warrants. Yeah, yeah. I don't been to jail too many times. Yeah. That's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to overlook that. Yeah. I mean, but see, that's what we deal with. But he don't come over here no more. Because he ain't got no one taking your peace from me. Mental issue. I don't want to take your He ain't been back over there. The city, the government, ain't dealing with mental issues. You know what I'm saying? They, they not really dealing with drug abuse over here. They not dealing with the homelessness issue over here. You over here, you see? You know what I'm saying? Look. Come on, man, this is ridiculous. So, you know. Hey, and D Menace ain't number like 16. I think that's why he keep getting out. That's another dude talking. He's like, man, that dude like 16. And that's that guy that got shot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I come, come on, on. Come, on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Please, whoever they need them <laughs> It seems like there are definitely nights that are more quiet than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. this, is, would you say this is a high activity night? This is, yeah. this is pretty much a... This is a high day. activity night compared to how we shut it down. Yeah. This ain't this a high is, activity night to when we first moved up in here. Yeah, this is rem reminiscent of uh, the, the atmosphere when we first arrived, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Before we were effective in our duties. You know, about this much reminiscent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really... It was about 30 of those young dudes yeah, out here. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually... With I'm two asking. guns in each hand. Yeah. yeah. Very intimidating. <laughs> right Very right intimidating. here. Right where we live. I'm trying to get an understanding, like, why, why was it like that? Why was it like that? I yeah, think what's, it's what's poor the point education. Of, what's the point of hanging out outside one of these buildings? But look, if, if, if you if you go outside the door, the, the gates of this apartment, what else is there to do? Sitting in front of the house. There's no YMCA. The, there's no jobs. There's no resource. place people can put. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Poor uh, education applications. Over here. The uh, the hot the library closed at six. You know what I'm talking about? So it's really. It, this this uh, this uh, community is geared for uh, delinquent activities uh, because there's nothing else here. And then the role models are people who could potentially be role models. They move out uh, out this neighborhood or neighborhoods like these, and they go to the other side of town. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a part of the reason why the role models. They role models taught them to rob and shoot and kill people. They didn't have role models that 
taught them how to be uh, upstanding citizens or role models or fight for their people or, or do the right thing. So all these people like 16, 17, a lot of them. So they, all they know is what they've been taught. The only thing they ever been taught was to stand on the corner and somebody pull up, pull them out their car, rob them. Now you got a car, a couple of dollars to go get you some drugs. It, is, it gets to when you, once you a drug addict, then the person that, that was there ain't the same person no more. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> these people are willing to do anything to get high and just, it's just to get high for a day. They don't give a damn if they got a house or a place to stay or a car because they'll just rob and take somebody's car. They'll rob somebody, get some money, and get high. You know what I'm saying? You're just looking for to survive every day. You know what I'm saying? This is what this is about, everyday survival. This ain't about, I got some big five-year game plan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> These people trying to survive the next 24 hours. That's why when we come do the food events, it helps because you get them 24 hours to think about something about, besides about where they're going to eat. We can't give them out no drugs. We can give them out some food. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, just change their mind a little bit. So I know it's, it's, it's hard for other people to understand why people would say that like, like that because maybe you weren't raised in a household where your mama was a crackhead and your daddy, you never knew your daddy. And your mama didn't care if you went to school. Didn't give a damn about what you did. You know what I'm saying? Uh, t your mama tells you to go out and rob people. Come yeah, back yeah. with some money. You understand what I'm saying? This is the type of environment they're living in. You know, and I, like I told you, a lot of these people we see them. Don't even stay over here, they just homeless. Including the people at the store, including the people, little young people you see running around, the girls, whatever, they probably ain't got no, you know what I'm saying? If they do, they stay with their great great grandma or something. They ain't got nowhere to stay, you know? Uh, just like that little girl, she ain't, she trying to run something, but she probably ain't got a GED. You know what I'm saying? You see, you hear that? So, you know, that's just. I guess those are, those are things that you want to stick out of, stay out of. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, let me, can I say something? No, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. You, know, you know, those type of things, domestic situations, those things, type of things happen. I think the biggest issue when you deal with those things, you just don't want it to happen outside public. Like, if you don't have a, everybody has disagreements with their significant other, right? Everybody, you're not going to agree with, with everything somebody says, you know? So, it's just not to do it outside public where it becomes a disturbance. That's, that's our deterrence part. That's the part we try to deter. And you see the engagement process of how we try to, you know, deal with a certain kind of way. Um, by talking to them, trying to keep people separated, whatever we have to do to try to stay, that's what we try to do. And I guess that, that goes back to trying to make the community a more pleasant place. Exactly. So that yeah. people can just live a more pleasant life. Exactly. So people could just live. Exactly. People over here couldn't even live. Exactly. They dying so much. You know, people just wanted to breathe and live and be able to walk outside. You know what I'm saying? Not just have a job. Can I walk outside? <laughs> but I get robbed and dying? From a political perspective, we, we say that uh, weapons are political tools to organize the mass of people. It would come like microphones. So when we first started doing these like demonstrations with weapons back in 2014, it, it brought us a lot of, uh, it brought us a, a, a platform, so to speak, you know? So, so in that sense, that's, that's what we say is the symbolism of a weapon because the idea of a black man with a weapon seems to be you know, taking that as a, as a sensational sort of sort of thing, you know, so when we try to take the sensational out of it, we try to just specifically identify what that means. And so our weapons are political tools because it creates conversations. Because a lot of times uh, we've run across people here and say, I didn't know you could legally carry weapons, things of this nature. Then we have some sort of conversation, that's what it creates. Um, second thing of course is a self defense mechanism. Now in terms of what we dealt with here, as far as when we just dealt with the police because of the disturbing situation, we didn't want any confusion about who was who. And so that way we can kind of keep them, keep everybody, keep everybody cool. So at least that's my position um, on that one. Keep everybody cool, no, no confusion. Because we, we're not trying to necessarily um, have to get into a, a shootout with the police department. That's not what we're trying to do. That's not what we, uh, it's not the type of example we're trying to give at this particular time as far as us doing these patrols. Yeah, as far as us walking through the community. That's not what we're trying to do. So, well, I should say a, a year ago, that was like eight or nine pages of like, things that happened, you know, as far as calls for incidents with police. When we, when we came here, we chopped it down one page. Was it one page? One, not even a full page. Not even a full page.
that's the engagement. It's just the engagement process. It's just them knowing. See, here's the thing. If we came here like we was just like police, it would have been, we wouldn't have been lasting here this long. Before we came here, there was multiple security groups, the tough guys, whoever you want to call. They all got ran from here. Look, our whole thing, our whole thing, our whole approach is you want to know why we just dress like this and dress like regular because we just want to identify with them as close as possible. Because if we identify with them as close as possible, then we can have some sort of relationship. But we walk around with things like we saw in the Army with Kevlar helmets and tactical vests mm -hmm. and they say security on the back. That's, that's not going to be in the communication. You know what I mean? No, it's not communication. We can't even. We we just had a we just had an issue that we just checked. Somebody just fired a weapon, and we we're able to address that situation, deter it, and deter it was just from escalating forward the best way we could. You, they're not going to be able, a, a normal security group is not going to be able to do that because they're going to be deemed as a threat. They're just going to escalate and it's going to continue to escalate. So they're going to call the police out. There. Yeah, and they're going to call the police. But see, when you call the police. The police is gonna leave, and they gonna still come back and escalate. Mm -hmm. They still gonna come back. It's not like oh, it's gonna stop because the police. You know what I mean? That's that's the difference. If I can explain it. So let's, let's just say theoretically, if we were like a, a regular security group, yeah, they would have called the police and stopped momentarily, and then they would have came back and addressed it again, and it would just kept going again and again and again until they ultimately would have left the property because they felt a certain level of threat. I mean, that's that's what tends to go on. So what I engage with part is. The social platform, which we do try to address with like the food, clothes, and shelter part of the process. Mind you, we've been working in Holly Hill five years, so we're not no strangers to Holly Hill. We know the lingo, we've been in the pinks, we've been in the browns, we're just doing this over in the greens. The greens, according to the stats that we got, was the most the most violent location in Holly Hills. According to the stats, it's according to the police stats. So, and we've been here, and we lasted the long, hot summer in Holly Hills and we address the terror criminal activity to the point to where we got it down to one page. That's, that's his point. 11 debatable in, uh, incidents. So all, out of all the incidences, this uh, this one has the most and that's where we're at right now. Yeah. And you know, this just goes on to describe different activity incidents and the uh, uh, assistant in the office was like, hey, you all remember when these were eight pages front and back? This is not even a page, so they were very excited about that. And what I did, I just kind of put a notation on this paper to, to uh, explain that to whoever might see this paper in the future, you know what I'm saying? So just imagine four, five, six, seven, eight of these front and back. And then when we come in, this is not even a full page. That's why I gotta keep this paper, you know what I'm saying? This is... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's your Please proof. Explain. Yeah, we're not going. We do no, no, I mean, but you yeah. gotta understand too. He gets the call about somebody being shot. Yeah. He roll up here and he sees people with weapons. Exactly. So yeah. I'd probably did the same thing he did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I mean, we we all we all people, bro. Ain't nobody trying to get shot out here. Nah, yeah. not tonight. Shit. We're all trying to go home, but but yeah, when he said he automatically just came, said put our weapons down, we weren't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we're uh, if we're if within our rights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If we're doing something illegal. Y'all ain't doing nothing wrong. Yeah. Correct. But it's all, it all comes down to safety, bro. Right on. Right on. On both ends. I'm correct. We just had uh, a shooting that took place. And so, uh, we just had a shooting that took place. So, we just, we just out here. Shout. Shout. Come tell us what's happening, man. Uh, so come come back and like. Uh, we had got a phone call about uh, a shooting. Uh, uh, a resident called me on uh, my personal uh, number. Uh, you know, I immediately went out to go engage the situation. Uh, well, when I um, uh, shying or hiding from confrontation, uh, situations like this. Uh, but so a, a call was made. Somebody got shot. Uh, we pulled up on the scene. Immediately, the uh, responding officer. Uh, uh, seen us with our rifles and immediately stopped us, told us to put our weapons down and on the ground. We refused. We was not going to put our weapons down, especially when we're in our legal right to open carry in Texas. Uh, what they did was the other officer um, um, 
uh, was trying to just make sure if we were okay to go while they do continue their investigation. Uh, you see, we're not in the back of the police uh, uh, unit. We, uh, we, we're we not in an active shootout. Uh, we did what we did, and now we're uh, going to go home while these uh, bacon good boys uh, are on the scene out here. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? We engage in our party. Yeah. Engage in our community. <laughs> Show you. That's good. We ain't putting no motherfucking weapons down. What's wrong with you? <laughs>more more and more often, as the apartment complex becomes safer, children come out to play at the Greens playground. Less and less, the patrollers carry their guns on the property. I'm Jacob Vaughn, a journalist based out of North Texas. Some people call me Cobb. And this was a Cobcast. Thanks for watching.